keep the host so that I can share my screen. Okay, hold on. Uh, you should be okay to go now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do it now. Can you see my screen? Is this all uh, clear to you? I can see your screen, yes. Awesome. Uh, so should I get started with it or should I wait for one minute for everyone to join? Um, I think you can get started because we're, we're already three minutes late and there already no time. You can get started. Sure. Yeah, sure. Alrighty, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to this workshop for HackRAM 2021 and wherein I can show you like how developers can quickly develop their uh, machine learning models in minutes. Alrighty, so a uh, couple of words about me, who I am. So I am Arjit, a 15 year old from India and I am an ambassador for Edge Jumpers, which is an embedded machine learning startup based in San Jose. Plus, I am the co-organizer for TinyML India, which is a part of TinyML Foundation, and also the lead organizer for TinyML Aspirants. Uh, any questions? Uh, if I am unable to solve them here, please feel free to connect with me on uh, Twitter with the handle shown here, plus uh, on LinkedIn as well. All right. So I will say a couple of words about why traditional ML, why building traditional ML models is hard, mostly because machine learning models are not possible or are not, uh, it is not mainly being possible to run on any device as per you want. Plus, uh, it is not possible to run them without on-premise networking facilities. You need to have a good amount of a bandwidth connection for them to run. Plus, it is not possible to develop them quickly and deploy them with higher accuracy. And these are one of the most important things, most common problems that developers face when they usually make up their traditional ML models. How do we solve this uh, thing? Uh, it's using a new technology called as tiny ML. So tiny refers to the MCUs or the microcontrollers, uh, and I will show a demo with you as well uh, in the end. So MCUs refer to the microcontrollers are the small chipsets, small devices that can run under less than one milliwatt of power usage. The fact that they are even uh, low power devices that can even run with small batteries for a very long amount of time. Plus, uh, it is most being used in the extreme industrial use cases, for example, like in forest for wildfire detection and for wildlife uh, like preservation and stuff like that. Plus, it is also used in uh, marine habitat pieces for like uh, scanning out various particles from the ocean, from the seabeds and uh, stuff like that. So mostly the places where there are no internet or the bandwidth connection which is available. Plus, like, as I've said earlier, ML refers to the machine learning perspective of things. And your ML is to be deployed onto devices that have less than one megabyte of RAM. And if you have been into ML perspective for a bit of time, then you might be sure that uh, ML is not a thing yet to get deployed on devices that have so much amount of less uh, memory constraint resources. So yes, with the help of some state-of-the-art ML algorithms, uh, frameworks and algorithms, we can deploy real-time AI models using devices which sit on top of your fingertip. So why do we deploy ML on to these uh, embedded of the edge devices? Mostly because embedded devices are present everywhere from wellness centering devices to the wearables, uh, I've shown some pictures in over here as well, to the smart farm meters, city traffic meter, vehicle parking meter. And even in most of the factory and industrial appliances, we see, we get to see like the entire perspective of embedded devices everywhere. There are 180 billion plus ARM devices or the ARM chips that are sold all over the world. And uh, ARM are the superior, uh, are the superior chipset producer in the instance of MCUs or the microcontroller-based devices. 
So 30 billion, 30 million MCQs were sold only in 2019 for only one single calendar year. And to be honest, as per a survey, uh, they were, they even can make up to 66% of the human population on earth. So they are like such a huge amount of uh, which is already being present around us. Plus, uh, server on farm is not a possible idea as well. So how TinyML helps developers? So TinyML can be seen like industry 4.0 and developers paradise. In the thing that the industry is moving to the edge, we get to see more and more number of embedded devices and the edge development use cases coming up. There is wider support for the ML frameworks or the tools for TinyML. MCUs are becoming more powerful day by day, and we get to see a great amount of increased RAM in them as well. With the help of faster hardware acceleration measures, such as the ones shown here, uh, the DSPs, and uh, they, they help us in uh, accelerating the amount of ML algorithms and the ML processes that run on the device. Plus, there is unbeatable support from industry giants and startups, all are coming together to help together the tiny ML ecosystem. So we can say that the real AI for everyone movement is on. Now, as I said earlier, we have a few perspectives of why you should get into tiny. ML. But once again, why tiny ML is made for developers? Uh, as I said earlier, edge of the embedded hardware is super low in cost. You can get all of them in around like 10 to 20 US dollars. You can get good amount of MCU in there as well. Plus, uh, there is excellent software support and excellent community based around tiny machine learning. The tiny ML foundation also organizes meetups. So they are groups of people in which they discuss uh, topics around tiny machine learning. So we have around uh, more than 6,000 members all over the globe, 30 plus groups in 20 plus countries. And someone needs to start from in Antarctica as well. So we can say that the prototype to production time takes very less amount of, takes super less uh, while considering the use case of tiny ML. So for today's demonstration, I will be showing you on how we can use Edge Impers, which is a tiny ML software platform. And it helps you in developing tiny machine learning software in a very less amount of time. So Edge Impers powers more than 35,000 plus tiny ML projects all across the community and growing as well. Uh, it is actually a web-based UI, so you don't need to download anything. It is based on the TensorFlow Lite Micro, which is another framework that comes from Google, which has been mostly being suited for MCU-based perspectives. Plus, it even uses its custom firmware uh, for interfacing with the hardware we have. And Eon, or the Edge Impulse uh, on your compiler, provides up to 50 to 55% faster performance with much lower RAM usage. So we can say that for developing tiny ML models, you do not need a PhD. And with the help of open source SDKs, you can develop tiny ML models from MCUs to even bigger models that run on GPUs as well. Here are the, some of the stats that are given in HMPers website that show the ML projects that are used uh, day by day. And it goes on increasing. All right, so I give a quick instance on how we can develop and how why TinyML is made for developers. But at the same time, uh, we need to see on how things work actually. So let me share a quick demo with you on how we can develop the model and how we can train it. Um, all right. So can you see my screen? This one, the Chrome tab. Uh, no, it's not visible. Let me, let me just stop sharing my screen. Sorry. Your sister sharing the PowerPoint screen. I think maybe you should like stop stop sharing and then share it again with another screen. Would that work? Yep. This should be good to go. Can I see it now? 
Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, for today's example, for today's demonstration, we would be using, we would be developing an American Sign Language based system that can be deployed in an MCU that uh, can run in a few milliwatts. So, when you head over to studio.agimbus.com, uh, I guess I should leave the link to that in the, somewhere, I will leave the link to it. So, once you go to it, you just create your own account in there and I've already created mine. And again, I, I just then click on create a new project. This one right there. Uh, and I click on create a new project. Here we go. Our projects get created and we can access the entire web UI for that. I press on OK and the entire thing just then pops up like the entire web page dashboard for creating your own model using edge first. And I'm aware of that, so I will click on I know what I'm doing and hide this result. All right. So uh, this is a device page on which you can connect the device using there are tons and tons of devices that you can connect to. For example, if you don't have an embedded device, you can just use your mobile phone and use the accelerometer sensor plus uh, the microphone from the mobile and the camera uh, for data collection as well. You can use a computer for extracting images from your microphone or like the webcam and stuff like that. So there are even different ports that have been supported by Azimpulse and I'll quickly share it on how many have been supported. All right, so these are the ones that you get to see the IoT discovery kit from ST. Then there is the Arduino Nano Synthesis PLE Sense, plus uh, both of the Data Computes AI sensor and the AI vision boards. There is also the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus, which is officially supported, but you can even use any OpenMV Cam with Edge Impulse as well. Plus, there are uh, HiMax V1 Plus and three different boards from Nordic. And we even get to see the Thunderbolt Sense 2 from Silicon Labs that runs on a single coin cell battery. Plus, uh, Sony's presence. And for today's demonstration, we will be using the Sony's presence. So keep that in mind. And we even have some newly launched boards like the Sentient Eye Naval board. And this one is from TKI, Texas Instruments. Plus, there is another board from Arduino, the Potenta A7, which is used for industrial based applications. And as I've spoken earlier, you can even use CPUs and GPUs as well. So, there are official support for Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, NVIDIA's Jetson, but you can run this on any Linux based operating system. All right. Um, so, what I will do is that these are some of the images that I just got from this data set, Kaggle.com, uh, Kaggle's this data set. And what I will do is that I will just download some images that I can then upload it to the Edge Emperor Studio, which can then bring up the model. Save pictures. Uh, let me create a new folder here. And even, yeah, that got downloaded. I will download a couple of more. And we have taken five for the E class, but you can gradually increase this if you want. But for the sake of this demonstration, I would be using as taking one to five for each type. So we would be using A, B, and C for doing today's classification. And let us open the B class as well and download five images of the scene.
and five done. All right, so E, B done. Now it's time to move, move on to the C class, the C image type. And the uh, first one done. If you look carefully at the images, you get to see that there are some ones with a darker sheet, plus there are some ones with a lighter sheet, which is for a bit of color contrast between them. But hopefully, if you clean up the model, it will be able to understand it as well. All right, so that's done. We are done with five images for all of the like E, B, and C as well. Um, there's a data acquisition page, and I will click on this upload existing data set. Opens up the page, and I choose the file from wherein I want to get the images. So we have A1, A10, A100, A1000 and 8001, I click on open. And I want this to be the training set. And because there are the different file names, so they will get conflicted. So I just write to keep the name A. And I will click on begin upload. All right, so the five images got uploaded to HMPO Studio. And it says that done, files are uploaded successfully. We choose the same with the B ones as well. Five of them, yeah. And B, second upload. And that's get uploaded as well. So it's pretty quick for taking in the images. All right. So the images have been successfully uploaded to HMPO Studio for our training data set. And question, yeah, there we go. All right, so we have 15 images. Uh, what I did is that the C images, I even wrote as label B. So what I can do is that there is another one more important feature for HM is that I can select multiple items and I can change their edit or change or edit their labels, which is very helpful in scenarios like this, while you want to do things uh, at a particular amount of time, but sometimes things get stuck as well. Let's select all of them. Are these the C ones? Yeah and edit labels, and I want to give them C. I will click on edit the label. There we go. So we have got five different items for C, five for A, and five for B as well. And yeah, that's good. So let's check how the images see. This is the quality that you get to see. Actually, this is the same one. All right, so we are done with the training data set and we will now have to get some images for the test data set as well. So this is for the E, click on save images. Uh, yeah. One for the B. Just, yeah. And one for the C. All right, so we got uh, we got three different images for A, B, and C, and now we will upload it to the test data set. Click on test data, and I will click on upload existing data. These files, A test, and this one is for the E. Begin upload. And it got uploaded similarly for the B as well. Where did it go? 
should we have here on the B? Hmm. What will we get here? Fail to upload an item like this. Just check back. Let's change to any other data set than in the body of What is what we can do is that we can just take the live uh, image that is coming from the camera that I have, the presence, and that will work as well. This should work now. All right, not an issue. Let us check back how things are working fine. All right, so we have got 94% of the team data set and six for the test data set. All right, and I will click on impulse design now, which is to create the main impulse of the model. So let's click on add a processing block for the image data set that we have. I will click on image because we are using a computer vision based model in our here. And transfer learning, surely, because we want to deploy this on a microcontroller. Successfully stored our impulse, then we have to move to the next two steps for the image and for the transfer learning methods. This is the one we just got and RGB. Yeah, let us keep that to be RGB because the camera that I'm using in over here, which is the Sony's presence, that is having RGB as well. I will click on save parameters and I will click on generate features. It will take about a minute for everything to get generated. All right, so uh, this is one of the most important features, surprising features that I get to see in Edge Impulse is that with the images or with any sort of data that you put into Edge Impulse, there is a feature explorer tab in which there are three different axes that can provide you the images in a three axis diagram sort of pattern. So here, uh, C ones are for the green ones that, are, that we have. I just removed it. And if I put it back, these ones are for the C. The orange ones are for the B and the blue ones are for A as well. Plus we get to see that it says the on device performance would be around four MS and peak time usage would be only a four kilobytes, which is super, super low. I will click on transfer learning and let us keep this to be 10 training cycles for the sake of this demo to be quick. And uh, mobile and to 0.35. Yes. Plus, you can even change to any other mobile net sort of model that you want, depending on if you are using a V1 or the V2, and all of them depends upon like. If you are deploying this on a CPU, then you can use a higher one. If you are deploying this on an MCU, then it is intended to use a lower one than the CPU. As if you are deploying this on a Cortex, uh, like Cortex M4, or maybe an M0 plus, 
then you need to use the lowest of them because they have much, much, much low amount of memory inside them. I will just keep this to be default just for the sake of this demo to, to be quick and I will click on start training. We can wait for a couple of minutes for this to end and this will be very quick, I, I tell you. In the meantime, I'm not sure if you do have the chat panel on for everyone who is attending, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat and uh, I can have a look into them as well. Do we have any questions coming in from the audience in the meantime? Uh, not really. All right. All right. Instead of saving the model with the help of Eon, as I have seen earlier, it first converts it to a fluid to model for your flight, that's a flow light, and then it uses Edge Impulse Neural Compiler for making the model much, much, much smaller. And zoom in if you want to see the logs for some time. There's a question. So someone said that they just joined 10 minutes ago and they're asking if you can brief on what's going on. You're using CNN for image classification, question mark. Yeah. So we are using, yeah, let me just uh, see a bit into it. So we are using this platform called Edge Impulse, which is being made as a software as a service platform for developing ML models. And so we are using a TF Lite as a sort of CNN model for uh, making an image classifier model for uh, the American Sign Language based system that can run on an MCU that consumes less than one milliwatt of power. All right. So in the meantime, uh, we got to see that we have got 100% accuracy and that is pretty good. So uh, again, as I've said earlier, you get to see the Feature Explorer tab in here, which is superbly, superbly helpful in Edge and First Studio. All right. So the green ones, I will zoom in again. So the green ones that we have are for the C. The yellow ones, sort of yellow ones that we have are for the E and the lighter green ones that we have are for B and this red one is an incorrect E. See that the amount need to be incorrect. Let's check it how it works. Yeah. All right, so we only have a loss of 0 0.32, which is not that much. Next up, as I've said earlier, it then provides a much detailed on device performance uh, visualization. So we have the flash usage of only 584 kilobytes. Peak RAM is of around 350 kilobytes and infinite time is 859 milliseconds on the Cortex M7. 
I'm skipping Eon Tuna for this moment, but you, you can again check back into the docs and have a look into them as well. So I will again read in the model just to get uh, a better amount of accuracy and sort of things like that. And I will click on train model again. Take the model now. And job done. All right, so what we have done is that we have collected the data using the data acquisition upload tab that we have. We have then created the impulse, then trained up the model using transfer learning. And we have now retrained the model successfully. And now it's time for live classification. What's the one, the e-test that I just got uploaded for the test data set. And let us see what it says. I click on load sample and it's classifying. All right, so this is the one that we just got. And it seems that we have got a bit lower accuracy over here due to the less amount of test data set that we just had. So a point to note is that make sure to have 80% or 20% like in the pattern of 80, 20, 80 for the train data set and 20 for the test data set. And we had 94 to six, 94 is to six, which was a bit low. Anyways, uh, so this is the one that we just got plus uh, here is again the feature explorer tab here the big one is for the image that we just classified and the smaller ones are for the other images that we had in the data set you can even use model testing if you want and i will just keep this process so uh, this is the deployment page wherein you can deploy your project to like any sort of hardware that you want to have. So you can run this as a C++ library or as an Arduino library if you are wishing to run this on any Arduino board with a camera. Plus this is for the SD board and this is for NVIDIA's uh, Jetson Nano. And even you can run this as a WebAssembly package or case in or in case like a JavaScript environment onto your browser. For now, we have the Son expressions, and we will be using the Egon compiler to quantize the model more and more and give us the highest amount of accuracy. Uh, quantized, yeah, analyze optimizations. Here we go. All right, so I will click on the build tab. It just
We will have to wait for some time for this to end. In the meantime, while this goes on, uh, I will not be deploying this directly through the help of uh, the build, the model onto the device that I have. But instead, what I will do is that I will connect it using HMPers CLI. In the meantime that I was seeing, the device has just, the zip file for the script has just got downloaded. And you, as you can see that this provides an information on how you can flash it just flashes onto the device and it runs your model. And then for uh, getting to see the logs and output audit, you can run edge-impulse-run that dash impulse for getting to the logs and the accuracy things that we are getting. All right, so what I will, I will be doing is that uh, I have my command prompt open somewhere, yeah. So I have this one which is the on spaces that I just have, and I have connected it to my laptop that I have here. Plus what I will do is that I will run edge-impulse-daemon for connecting our device to edge-impulse studio for this demonstration. But if you want to deploy this onto a field, you don't need to connect it to edge-impulse studio, you can then run the script that I just got downloaded, you can just click enter and it will take up the uh, script from them and run it and lay out the data to you. Um, is uh, I will be connecting to a different project that I had. It just got connected into another different project that I had. So what I can do in here using the daemon that I have is that h dash impulse dash daemon dash dash clean. And I will put my address here, login credentials. I hope that's my password. It is not. Um, what was it? Yeah, remember it and it got connected. So I will just then select the project that I want to use. Yes, so this is the tab that I have and we will have to go all the way down 
to HackRam 2021 for connecting our device to HMPL Studio. And all okay, all green, our device is now connected. On presence. Yeah, named it. And the device is now connected to our Edge Impulse Studio. We'll then click on the live classification tab and choose camera 480 cross 360. This is the feed that I'm having. I've opened uh, in my monitor thing that I want to display to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that should be good. So let us let us first take the C for classifying it, then we can use anything else. It's moving uh it up. That's a bit input, but I think I did first start sampling. Even though if you want to develop this directly into a free use case, I would honestly suggest you to get much much more amount of data into this for classifying but we get to see that and along as well we get to see that it's easy and now this time we are finally getting some good results and it sees it is c with 82 percent of accuracy which is super neat plus this is again the big ball uh the big blue ball uh, for the image that we just took Similarly, the others are for the various different data set images that we just have. All right, so coming back into our presentation. So our demo time was pretty neat. So check out Edge Impulse now. You can visit our website on edgeimpulse.com. You can check out tons of tons of community projects we made at taxi.io slash edgeimpulse. For blogs, you can check out hmpulse.com slash blogs, which provides you breakthroughs uh, into the pages and things that are happening on the time in the space. Uh, here is this Twitter link. You can check out our handle as well as at hmpulse and for LinkedIn as well at hmpulse. For the hmpulse public project, which is the link of the project that can be publicly shared, I will share a link into this later and I will then just put this PPT or share this PPT into the Discord group that we have. All right, so conclusions. Uh, TinyML is growing rapidly and it is the best time to join the TinyML community and the industry. You can check out TinyML Foundation at uh, tinyml.org. For meetups, foundations meetups, you can check out meetup.com slash pro slash TinyML. And uh, follow hashtag TinyML and Twitter and uh, social sites to get to know more about the latest trends and developments in tiny machine learning space. So that was it from my side. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I really hope you liked it. And do let me know any kind of questions you have. Yeah, so um, someone asked if they can deploy it on the back end of a website or is it just a hardware device? And I this into a website as well. As I've spoken earlier, you can use WebAssembly plus JavaScript to deploy this onto a website. Yeah, um, I think that's the only question that people have. Um, but yeah, thank you for um, hosting this workshop with us. Um, and you know, if you guys, um, and he's on our Discord server, so if you have any questions, any point of the hackathon, feel free to you know reach out and ask for any questions that you might have. Um, but yeah, so this is the end of our first workshop and, you know, you can go off and build your projects and I'll see you guys in the next workshop. All right.
Best of luck to all participants. Hold on, there's another question. What are the types of data we can work on? I guess using so Edge Plus currently supports data sets like the one that I showed here, uh, which are for the image based data sets for computer vision based applications. You can use audio data for doing various different kind of uh, audio processing stuff like that. Plus, there are also motion data sets that you can use for motion tracking and uh, various different stuff. I will show my screen once uh, back again so I can tell you how many different types of data sets are available. So if you move on to the data acquisition page, you can see that uh, so mostly in the data acquisition page, you can use, you can take any kind of data, either it is in the JPG format for the images, the audio file like the MP3 or the web files and also for the motion data sets as well. So these are the mostly the three, uh, three different types of data sets that are used and supported at Edge of Pulse. Okay, um, is there any more questions for RG? Um, wait, maybe we can wait for a few more seconds just to see if anyone has questions. Um, but if you don't have any questions, you're free to go and start building your projects. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right. I don't think there are any questions left, but if you guys do have questions, he's on our server, so you can always just reach out and stay safe. And I'll see you guys on our next workshop. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, everyone.